Rather than read his bio, I thought I'd share with you a video of Ajay and his team in action. Ladies and gentlemen, your manager of the Wasatch Global Opportunities Fund, Ajay Krishnan. I uh, had nothing absolutely to do with that video, so if you didn't like it, it's somebody else's fault. If you liked it, I'll take credit for it. Thank you again, David, for the opportunity to address your State of the Union. Uh, now, Wasatch Advisors has been in business for about 35 years. We manage a little over $14 billion in assets, and $4 billion of that comes through the advisor channel, the financial advisor channel. So we've had the opportunity to work with a number of advisors from around the country. And I have to say that David and his team ranks right up there at the top. Uh, and you can see, obviously, from his results that he's done a phenomenal job. So you're all in good hands, is what I'm trying to say. You know, the, it is interesting that uh, as I was preparing for this presentation, I walked into this room and they said, you can't uh, have any drinks. And I said, okay, that is going to be a problem. Because David made a lot of predictions, threw up a lot of charts, and I have a prediction of mine that is always true. The quality of my presentation is directly proportional to the amount of alcohol you consume. <laughs> but they're not going to let you drink here, so now I'm going to suck. <laughs> but be that as it may, we do the best we can. You know, hopefully one of the takeaways that you had in looking at uh, uh, David's presentation is that we are in a period of tremendous change. And if you travel the world, you'll see that happening around the world in countries. And I grew up in India. I go back to India, and I'm, ama I'm amazed at the amount of change that's taking place. But not only is it the change, but it's the pace of change. Now, David tossed out that slide about the number of years it took to double per capita income. I'll give you another stat, which I find more interesting. It took McDonald's 46 years to sell 100 billion burgers. It took Google four years to have 100 billion applications downloaded. That tells me that the pace of change is pretty incredible. I know they're not the same burgers and, and uh, Google apps, but the point being that we are in a period of tremendous change, and what that affords us is tremendous opportunity. And I would submit to you that if you're a US-based investor, you are in a very unique position because you've seen this movie before. You've seen this play out. If you look at the last 50, 60 years of what's happened in Western Europe and in the US, you've seen a transformation of economies and countries. And the same thing is now playing out in different parts of the world. So then it begs the question, okay, David picked us as a manager to manage your assets. How are we doing this? How are we, you know, you saw the, the, the video with us traveling around the world. Uh, actually, it's the, uh, the stats are last year we hit 500 companies in 27 countries. So it's, we do get out on the road a lot. So how do, we, how do we get to those companies? Well, we get into a room, we pick a dart, we put out the map of the world and we throw a dart, see where it lands, we book a flight and we go. Or sometimes we say it's really cold in Utah, what's a warm place, let's go. This is a tough crowd. <laughs> I, I, I told you you need to drink more. But, but it's actually, that's not quite the way we do it. We have a very robust quantitative engine uh, where we take the 6,000 or so names. We put it in there, we shake it, basically, look at a number of uh, stats, and then we pick the countries or areas that we think are the most interesting. Uh, so it's a very uh, defined process that we've perfected over the last 35 plus years. Our belief is that the numbers tell a story. So let the numbers point you in the right direction, and then you go and do your due diligence. Once we've identified the countries or companies, then we get on an airplane and we try and meet the management teams. And what is it we're trying to do on these trips, besides having a good time? Um, well, one of the things we're trying to assess is, does the ground reality match up with the numbers? Are the things that we see on the ground, does it make sense with what the numbers tell us? What kind of management team is it? You know, we have a very simple philosophy. Let's try and find people that we like, admire, and trust. I know it sounds a little hokey and, and uh, hometownish, but, but it's, that's exactly what we try and do. Find people we like, admire, and trust once we've identified them through the numbers, and then invest the money with that. And then the third reason we make these trips is to gain incremental insight. With that in mind, you know, running the, the screens, Late fall last year, I 
decided to put together a trip to Turkey. Now, I've never been to Turkey, so this was going to be my first trip. I've traveled a number of countries, but not Turkey. And this was the first Islamic country that I was going to go to. And that made me a little bit nervous. You know, I grew up in India, with, so, and that puts up a certain amount of baggage. I've lived in the U.S. for the last 20-plus years. Post 9-11, my view of the Islamic countries has changed. And so I was a little apprehensive, I have to admit. But I have to, once I got there, it was interesting to see that Turkey is just like any other country. They're very progressive, they're forward-thinking, and people seem happy. And you know what? They like the Western products. They like the products that you and I aspire for. They're people just like everybody else. And that is an insight that you cannot glean from reading the newspaper or reading the popular press. And so that's the other reason we get out on the road, because it gives us uh, an opportunity to experience something firsthand. And one of the companies that, uh, you know, if you, if you say, okay, you know, the Middle East or, or uh, that part of the world, maybe they'd hate American products. Well, one of the companies we own in this portfolio is an American, as American a product as you can imagine, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola Isichek is the sixth largest bottler in the Coke system. Uh, the way Coca-Cola runs its business is they uh, uh, assign the bottling licenses to different parts of the world, to different companies. Uh, you may have heard of FEMSA in Mexico and, and ARCO in, in Latin America, and Isichek is the one in, uh, in Turkey. The opportunity for Istiqik is, is tremendous. Turkey is a, country, is a relatively small country, 75 million people. But what Turkey also serves as is the gateway to that region. From Turkey, they sell to Pakistan, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Iraq. Now, Brandon made the comment to me earlier that, yeah, but how can you really do business? You know, those seem like tough places. And I agree. I would not want to go up and set up shop in Iraq or Azerbaijan or Kazakhstan. But this is their backyard. This is their neighborhood. So the fact that it is tough and rough it really doesn't matter. That's where they do business. And there's tremendous opportunity there. David talked about the pace of change and the, change, uh, the uh, globalization and urbanization that is occurring in different parts of the world. Well, that affords the opportunity. And they have the same aspirations that you and I do. A, a bottle of Coke tastes great anywhere in the world on a hot summer day. I mean, trust me, it just works. It's, it's fantastic. And so they want to experience that. And there's also opportunity even in the existing markets of Turkey. You know, if you look at the per capita consumption in Turkey, it's half of that of UK. It's significantly below Bulgaria and Germany. Uh, you don't want to go to the Mexico levels because that had a completely different reason why it got to those levels. But the point being that there's an existing opportunity not only in the Turkish market but also in that region. And we think this is a long-term holding in the portfolio. We think this company is going to do extremely well. An interesting side, side note, uh, the current CEO of Coca-Cola was actually the ex-CEO of Coca-Cola Isichek. So this is not only a fantastic company, but it's also a good training ground, seems like, for top managers for Coke. And Coke recognizes that as well. You know, one of the other observations that I made on my trip to Turkey, and I've seen this time in, play out time and again in other parts of the world, and I'm sure you've experienced the same thing. When you travel internationally and you walk through the airports, you see these duty-free stores around the world. And they're selling luxury goods. And we invested in one of the airport companies a while ago. And in digging through the financials, it turns out 40%, yes, 40% of their revenues for an airport comes from duty-free shopping. So an airport is basically nothing more than a mall where you park an airplane. Now, that was a stat I would not have believed if you told me that. You know, but it is interesting. And so some of the retailers have recognized that opportunity. They see this as a good avenue for growth. The other observation in, in my travels, and, and I'm sure some of you have seen the same, is you go to the major metros in the world, whether it be Paris, London, New York, you'll see hordes of consumers from the emerging markets walking out of these stores, buying goods by the armfuls and as if it's going out of style or they were giving it away for free. And that's another trend that we've seen. The Asian consumer wants to consume. They want the same goods that you and I aspire for. And that's another theme that we try and play out in the portfolio. One of the companies that benefits from that trend is Ferragamo. I'm sure most of you are familiar. Ferragamo is an Italian luxury goods retailer started out in shoes and now they've branched into other products. 
The stat that you may not be aware of is that 35% of their revenues comes from Asia. 35%. Their fastest growing segment is the airport channel, the duty-free stores in airports. Isn't that amazing? I mean, so you think people go to, through airports because they have to and they have to travel. Well, one of the things they have to do when they transit is you've got to kill time. What do I do when I have to kill time? I walk and I buy chocolates for my kids or I buy stuff for myself without telling my wife. But the point being that they have exploited this, this theme. The Asian consumer is coming of age. How do we service that Asian consumer? You know, China is up significantly for them. It's, it's a pretty amazing company that, and it's, I think, continuing to do, uh, going to do well even in the future.